Hey there, I'm Alicia Katz Pollock, and welcome to the Beginner's Guide to QuickBooks Online. I'm really glad you're here. Make sure that you download the materials that go along with today's presentation. If you scroll down, you'll see that you have access to the slides so that you can print them out as handouts. And then there's also a summary page of notes so that you can get to the important points really quickly. To find them, go ahead and scroll down and you'll see them right down below. Then you can go ahead and download them and come back to the video. In addition, we've included a free gift. This is my 10 point year end checklist that when I prep my clients files for taxes, these are all the things that I look at to make sure that the data is accurate so that when you talk to your accountant and you give them your profit and loss report and your balance sheet, they're accurate so that you're paying the right amount of taxes. So definitely take advantage of this checklist and download it now. Now you're here to find out about QuickBooks Online and see if it's the right software for you. So here are a list of the topics that we're going to talk about. The first thing is we're going to take a look at QuickBooks Online subscriptions and how to customize it to your own company's needs. We'll take a look at its multi-user and mobile capabilities. We'll look at all the bells and whistles and the cool things that QuickBooks Online does that no other software does to help you manage your business. I'll also demonstrate the income and expense transactions that you'll do on a daily basis so that you can take the money from your customers and spend it. And then I'll go over some of the reports so that you can visualize your data and help your company grow. Now, a little bit about me. My name is Alicia katz -Pollock. And I have a master's in teaching, and I'm a member of the Intuit Trainer Writer Network. So I'm one of Intuit's national trainers. I have several books on Amazon to teach people to use QuickBooks and also textbooks through Questiva Consultants. I'm also a top 10 pro advisor from Insightful Accountant. Now, there's a quote on this slide, and that is that an investment in knowledge pays the best dividend. What that means is that when you're getting started with QuickBooks Online, you may think to yourself, I can save money and just kind of figure it out for myself. But the truth is, is that if you spend a little bit of time getting trained on what it is and how it works and get it set up specifically for your company's needs, that's going to be a completely streamlined experience, which is a lot better than coming back around the end of the year and realizing that your data is wrong and you haven't been using it correctly, in which case it's really time consuming and expensive for a cleanup. And so I have worked with thousands of businesses to help them get trained correctly from the beginning so that you're not overwhelmed by the process. You're not stressed out by learning new software. I like to make the learning fun. Here's an example of somebody who's in my program and has taken my courses. You know, it just takes away the fear knowing that you have the support that you need to do it right from the beginning. So let's take a look at why I recommend QuickBooks Online. Now, one of the coolest things about QuickBooks Online is that it's fully customizable. Every business is different. Some have very simple needs. Some have a lot of complex data that they need to parse. QuickBooks Online is customizable so that you can set it up with the terminology that you need for your business and set it up so that it reflects exactly your company's needs and requirements. Along those lines, one of the things that you need to do is start properly by picking the correct version of QuickBooks Online for you. So technically there's five, although the first one, Self-Employed, doesn't really count. It's its own separate software. So the QuickBooks Online version called Self-Employed is only good if your business isn't really a business. It's a side hustle. It's a hobby. It's you have a full-time job and this is what you do on the side. So Self-Employed is good for you know artists who are just you know making crafts on the side or Uber drivers. And it allows you to combine your business and personal expenses and just say, this is business and this is personal so that you you have easy bookkeeping. But if you're running your company with the intention of growing, you need to use one of the other versions of QuickBooks Online from Simple Start through Advanced. Simple Start is really good for small, simple service businesses. It's basically a glorified checkbook where you can track your income and you can track your expenses and you, know, you can make invoices for your customers and send them to your customers to get paid. So it does have accounts receivable. It has one user license and the price is $25 a month. Essentials, the second level, is the core of the bookkeeping. Now it adds in accounts payable as well so that you can track the money that you owe to other people. Essentials has three user seats and it's $50 a month. Plus is the most popular version. This is the one that most of my businesses need. 
it's great for growing companies because what it does allow you to do is slice and dice your numbers. It's got over a hundred different reports that you can run and it gives you ways of categorizing your information that the other versions don't have, specifically classes and locations. So if maybe you're at a place and you've got two different locations and you want to be able to track them separately. Or maybe you're a landlord and you have different properties and you would like to be able to see the income and expenses separated by the properties. Or maybe you're in construction and you want to be able to do some analysis on how much work you've been doing on remodels versus new construction. Anytime you want to be able to slice and dice your numbers like that, using classes and QuickBooks Online Plus is the way to go. Another benefit is it comes with five user licenses and it's $80 a month. And then advanced is the upper level. And advanced is good for complex corporations where not only does it have all the tools that Plus has, but you get custom reports, you get batch data entry, you get custom fields, and that's where they're rolling out all their new slick features all the time. And so it has up to 25 simultaneous users and the price as of now is $180. One of the first decisions that you have to make when you're getting started is which one is the right one for you. You can start low and grow, or if you start at the top and you discover, I don't actually need all those features, you can downgrade as well. One of the things that people say to me right off the bat is, but that seems like a lot of money. I hate subscriptions. I don't want to be billed every single month. Well, you know, the world is kind of moving into that subscription-based model. Even if you're going with QuickBooks Desktop, that's also subscription-based. And when you look at the prices, one thing that I can guarantee you is that it has return on investment. So think of it this way. So you're looking at Plus and you're like, oh my God, $80 a month, that seems like a lot of money. But think of this. If it saves you one hour a week because of all the automations, because of the bank integrations and all of the accounts receivable features that it has, let's just say it saves you one hour over what you're doing now. Let's say you make $20 an hour, and that's probably conservative. It has already saved you $80. So you've broken even right there. And then that's not including all of the other benefits that come along with it. You need to kind of shift your mindset a little bit. The QuickBooks Online price will absolutely pay for itself. It will save you a ton of time and it will save you a lot of money. Another benefit is that your accountant can also log in automatically from wherever they are. So you don't have to spend any time whatsoever running reports to send to your accountant or sending them copies of the file for them to use. That alone is going to save you the subscription price right there. Now, another consideration is that it's multi-user by nature. You log into QuickBooks Online from your computer, and it doesn't matter whether you're on a Mac or a PC. It doesn't matter what browser you use, although Chrome is the recommendation. What that means is that you don't have to have a separate copy of the software for each user on each computer. You don't have to maintain a server. You don't have to have an IT department to support it. Anybody can sit down anytime and just log in. The fact that you don't have to spend any time or any money managing all the multi-user components really makes it sing. Each user does have their own set of permissions. Your different employees can see only the information that they need to see. Another cool feature is that QuickBooks Online is also mobile. Not only can you get to it from any computer, but you can also log into it from apps on your phone or on your tablet. Let's say you have employees in the field that are making estimates for customers. They can make the estimates right then and there and get a signature instead of having to do it on paper and then take it back into the office for data entry. You can use the camera on your phone to take pictures of your receipts. So you have automatic receipt capture. You can connect the merchant services with a Bluetooth swiper and you can actually take credit card payments right from your phone. Because it is mobile, you can log in and while you're sitting watching your kid's soccer practice, you can go in and categorize all your transactions. You can literally do your QuickBooks from anywhere. Another feature is its integration with third-party apps. QuickBooks Online is not meant to be all things to all people. It's meant to be the core software for your accounting. And then whatever your specific company's needs are, there's an app for that. So you can create your own custom experience with different apps that integrate and synchronize to QuickBooks Online. So maybe you have an e-commerce system. Maybe you use a customer relationship management software system. Maybe you need more robust inventory than what's built in. Maybe you need billing approvals or receipt workflows. Or you have employees who need to put information into the system, but you don't want them logging into QuickBooks Online. These are all reasons for the third-party apps. Some of them are free. Some of them have a cost, but 
just like I was saying before, each one has its own return on investment. And the fact that you can have complete control over your environment is worth every penny. Now what I want to do is show you some of the innovative features, some of the bells and whistles that aren't available in any other software. They're not in QuickBooks Desktop. They're not in Xero. They're not in any other accounting software. The first one is the banking feed. If you're used to desktop and moving over to QuickBooks Online, it blows the desktop version out of the water. It's so full featured. What it allows you to do is connect to your bank and see all the transactions that have cleared to your bank that day. Then your job every day is to go through those transactions and either match them and confirm the transactions that you already put in your QuickBooks or use the banking feed for your data entry, which completely streamlines it. In fact, you can make rules that automate it. So when you have routine expenses, like let's say your electric bill, you can just say that anytime you see an expense from PGE, go ahead and categorize it to electricity and accept it. And then that way you don't even have to touch those transactions. They all happen for you. I want to take a minute and show you what that looks like in the product. So I'm going to move over to QuickBooks Online. This is a sample company that anybody can get to anytime. And you can test things out here. So when I want to go to the banking feed, I go on the left-hand side to banking over here. And this now shows me my banking feed. So I have connected to it my checking account, my savings account, and my credit card, basically all of your business accounts. Then I can see what has cleared the bank that day. I can see here that these green matches these are things that I have already manually entered into my QuickBooks and I can go ahead and say, oh yeah, this transaction is this one and go ahead and click match. Or maybe sometimes there's multiple matches. You can pick the correct one and go ahead and take them in that way as well. And if a transaction is brand new, you can click on it and say what it's for. And it has artificial intelligence and learns as you go. So the next time you see another expense from that same vendor, it will automatically know what to call it. So using the banking feed speeds up your data entry. And as I mentioned, you can create rules to automate it so that anytime something comes in and says A1 backhoe rental, it will automatically know that it's equipment rental. So the bank feed is just an absolutely amazing innovation that saves you so much time. In fact, I love it so much that I have a full two-hour course just on using the banking feed. So throughout this presentation, you're going to see links in the bottom of the slides, because like I said, I love training. And so that's a two hour class on using the banking feeds. Another feature of QuickBooks Online is that it does have built in merchant services. It's called QuickBooks Payments. It allows you to have your customers pay you by credit card or by bank transfer or ACH. You can send them an invoice and they can click a button in their email and go log in and pay you right through their interface. So it saves your AR. You no longer have to send them an invoice with a PDF that they print out and they send over to billing. And then at the end of the month, they write all their checks and then they pop a check in the mail to you. It's so much faster. You send an invoice, they click pay, they pay, and you're done. You can even do recurring charges to clients. Let's say you charge the same amount every single month. You can create a recurring sales receipt that charges their credit card or does a bank draft. It will send them an email. It will create the transaction. It will create the invoice payment. It will put it in undeposited funds and it will batch them all together at the end of the day. So it matches your banking feed. The rates are competitive with Square and PayPal. In fact, they're a little bit cheaper. And one of the things that you might have noticed if you are a Square or PayPal user is that Square and PayPal don't actually pay you the full amount. So if you charge a customer $100, you don't see $100 in your bank account, you see like 9681. And then you have to go in and either subtract the merchant service fees, or you have to find some way of categorizing it, or maybe you didn't even notice. And in your records, instead of having $100 on the sale, you've been saying 9681 the whole time, then you've been underreporting your income. QuickBooks Payments solves all of those problems because you get paid in full, and then they take the merchant service fees in a separate transaction. The fact that it does all of that automation for you, it's like free money. You know, when I have my automatic payments for my clients, now it just runs. It charges them. It sends them the receipt. The money shows up on my bank account and I didn't lift a finger. I don't have to do my monthly AR invoicing and sending all the customers invoices and waiting for payments anymore. It's just an absolutely amazing benefit. There's also a project center. If you are working with clients where it's not just one and done, you 
have a long-term project that has multiple stages. You have the income from the job. You also have expenses associated with the job and you want to do job costing. That's where the project center comes in. This is another thing that I want to show you real quick. So I'm going to head back over to my QuickBooks Online and down in the left-hand side, I'm going to go to projects right here. Now the project center is only in QuickBooks Online Plus and Advanced. And so here you'll be able to see a list of all of your projects and you can see the income and the costs associated with it. And when I click on it, I can go in, I can see my profit margin, I can see the different income transactions, I can see all of my associated costs, I can see lists of the transactions, time spent on the job. It's just absolutely amazing. So if you're in construction or art or anytime you have ongoing multi-stage projects, this project center is amazing for your job costing and it makes it so much easier to use. Another option is payroll. You don't have to have payroll, but you can turn it on anytime. QuickBooks Online Payroll is full service, so they will do all the direct deposit for you, although you could print checks if you need to. They'll even pay the taxes for you. And it has QuickBooks Time. It has time tracking as well. So all your employees can use their phone to start and stop their clocks. It imports all of their time. You can run payroll and you have the choice of having it be completely automated where you literally do nothing. Or you can go in and do many of the steps yourself if you want to work with leave and benefits and all the different things that some businesses need. You have the ability to go in and do the work manually yourself as well. But it's neat that for small businesses, maybe everybody's on salary. You can literally just set it and forget it. It'll pay everybody and pay the taxes and you don't have to spend any time doing anything. I do have another course just on using QuickBooks Online's payroll if your company does run payroll. If your company does run payroll, but you do it with an outside source like ADP or Gusto, those integrate just fine. Another cool feature is receipt management. Are you always chasing down those little pieces of paper and sticking them in a folder and ignoring them? QBO allows you to actually attach pictures of your receipts to every single transaction in the software. And you can get the receipts in a lot of different ways. The first way is that you could forward your emails. If you get a PDF in your email or an image in your email, you can just forward it and it will show up in QuickBooks Online ready to be categorized. You can also use the app on your phone and take pictures of the receipts. You can drag and drop them in. There's a lot of different ways of getting them in and your employees can send you the receipts this way as well. So once the receipt is in, you can categorize it. And if it finds that transaction already in QuickBooks Online, it will attach the image to the transaction. Or you can use the receipts to do the data entry. And then when it clears the bank, it will find it and match it. So it's a two-way street. So once you've done that, you don't have to save the paper anymore. You can go find the receipt instantaneously just by opening up the transaction. And if you are constantly chasing your employees to go get their receipts, this will completely solve that problem. There's also a mileage tracker feature that's available to any administrative users. The tracker could be you just going in and typing in the mileage for the day, or you can use the app again and turn the app on. And then anytime you get in your car, it will track the beginning and ending points. And then you can swipe left and right and say, this was business, this is personal, this is business, this is personal. And then it will calculate what your mileage reimbursement is with the current tax rates. It really automates a lot of that as well. And you can train it. Once you have named a location, it will always recognize that location. Another slick feature is a built-in checking account. Now, this is pretty new. It's called QuickBooks Checking, and it's a checking account from Green Dot Bank. But instead of logging in at the bank's website, it's all right inside your QuickBooks. It's completely free. There's no fees. In fact, you get a 1% APY, so you get 1% interest. Now, it's not 1% per month. It's 1% per year, but it's actually still more interest than I get from my Bank of America accounts. It's designed to be integrated with your merchant services and your payroll to kind of make a seamless experience where every time you charge your clients for the merchant services, it goes into QuickBooks Checking. And then when you run your payroll, it comes out of QuickBooks Checking. Now, you don't have to use it. You don't have to do that particular workflow, but it's there. 
Another cool feature is that it has what are called envelopes, and it gives you up to five different envelopes that you name where you can silo off your money for different reasons. So maybe you're doing profit first, and instead of having five different bank accounts where you're constantly shuffling your money back and forth, you can just put the money in the envelopes. You can create an envelope for your payroll taxes so that every time you run payroll, you put some of the money in this separate little envelope, and then that way you can't spend the money. Any money that's in an envelope is untouchable until you transfer it back up to the main level. So I like to use envelopes for my payroll taxes. I have a, an equipment envelope so that we can buy new computers and new technology, anything that you're saving up for. It's nice that you can take some of the extra money that you have in your checking account and put it in an envelope where it's untouchable until you decide that you want to spend it. It's really helpful for business owners, especially those who are always trying to like make sure that they don't overspend. This is a great way of making sure that you only spend money you can afford to spend and that your company does save for the future. Now that we've looked at some of the cool, exciting features, let's actually take a look at how QuickBooks Online works and what you can expect to do during the day. So I want to show you some of the fundamental income transactions and expense transactions. So let's start with making the money, which is what everybody's in business for. There's two different workflows that you can use, sales receipts and invoices. Sales receipts are what you use when your transactions with your customers are one and done. They come in, they buy a product or you perform the service and they pay you and you're completely done. So a sales receipt allows you to say what you did, when you did it and how much it cost and how much they paid you all in one form. And then you would collect your sales receipts through the day. And at the end of the day, you would make your bank deposits, which combine all of those payments together so that they match what's on your banking statement. So you would combine all of your credit card payments all together, and then you would make a bank deposit for your checks and a bank deposit for your cash. So that's what your daily life would look like. Then there's also accounts receivable, and that's when you're providing the service or the product, but your customers are paying you later on. Maybe you start with an estimate where you put in a bid on the job and then they accept that estimate and then you start the invoicing. And then you make an invoice and you send it to the customer and they pay you later. Maybe you make several invoices and they pay you for all of them at one time. Maybe you make one invoice and they make partial payments against it. All of those ways are available in QuickBooks. And then again, at the end of every day, you combine all of your payments together to make the deposit. So let me actually show you what this looks like inside your QuickBooks. So new transactions are made from the new button up in the upper left. And you can see here that I'm still in the projects. It doesn't matter where you start, although you could go to the dashboard and do it from the dashboard. You can see here that you even have some circles to help guide you through the process. So here I am in Craig's design and landscaping. And so let's say they go and mow somebody's lawn. We can go up to the plus new button and I'll do a sales receipt because they're paying me right away for the service. So I will then pick my customer from the list and I'll come down to the product and service and put in what it is that I'm doing for them today. So let's say this is part of gardening and I am mowing the lawn. So you can be specific and in the description, say what you're actually doing. Then we did two hours at $25 an hour. So they are paying me $50. Then I can come up to the payment method and say how they paid me. All right, they paid me by MasterCard. This is now showing how they paid me. If I was in a real file and using QuickBooks Payments Merchant Services, I would then be able to put in the credit card number right here and run the credit card right from inside the transaction. Now that this sales receipt is done, I can save and send it to the customer, or I can drop this down and close it and go on to my next step. So that's what to do when your jobs are one and done, when you just perform the service, take the payment, and that's it for the day. If it's a little bit more complex, if you're making an invoice and then taking a payment for it, the process is pretty similar. I'm going to go up to plus new, and this time I'm going to make an invoice. And, you know, I showed you that project for the koi pond that we're building for Amy's Bird Sanctuary. So I'm going to pick it right for that project. I can see here that hmm, there was some billable time that we did. If you're in QuickBooks Online Plus, you can say that some of these expenses are billable to the customer and import them right onto the invoice. Now, most people aren't going to use that particular workflow, but hey, let me just show you all the cool things that QuickBooks Online can do when you turn on all the features that you need. So we had some custom design work. 
and we did it through the time cards. So that's why it showed up here as waiting to be billed to the customer. Then in addition to that design work, let's go ahead and say we also started the installation and we put in three hours of her installation on her koi pond. So here we have an invoice for $525, which then I can send to her. And in the email, it will have a button that she can click in order to pay it. Or if I wanted to make another one, I could do save and new. You can even make links where you can just like text somebody a link to the invoice so that they can see it and pay it. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and just say save and close. Now that I've made that invoice, we can also go to Amy's project and see those transactions. So I'm going to go to sales and to customers. And here's Amy's Bird Sanctuary. So I can go into Amy's Bird Sanctuary. And here's the invoice that we just created. Now that it's time to take payment on it, I can receive payment and put in how they paid me. So maybe it was by credit card. Maybe this time she gave me a check. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a check. And I would say the check number that she paid me with. And here you can see a list of all of her open invoices. Maybe she paid me for this invoice that I just created for you. But notice that she had some other open invoices. Maybe she goes ahead and she pays for all of them at one time. I can go ahead and just check off all of them. And so she's writing me a check for $1,092. Now I've taken that one payment against multiple invoices. So you can see that you have complete flexibility about how you take those payments. So I'll save and close that. And then at the end of the day, this is one of the steps that you'll do regularly. You make your deposit so that it matches the banking feed. So again, I would go up to the plus new button in the upper left-hand corner, go over to bank deposit and see all the money that we took in for today then we would combine how they came together. So this check I deposited singly. This would be a deposit into my checking account for that money. Then I'll save in new. Then let's say the rest of these were all credit card charges that all got combined together and hit the bank in one group. There is that grand total, which I would then find on my banking feed. So these are some of the workflows you would do during your day to use QuickBooks Online to take money from your customers. Now, let's look at it from the other perspective. That was when you're taking your money. Now, let's spend your money. Spending your money happens kind of in the same way. We've got different routines for different circumstances. If you're writing by check, you can do paper checks or there's built-in bill pay right inside here so you can pay electronically. You know, if you're used to logging in at your bank and sending payments through your bank, you don't have to come back into your QuickBooks and copy that same transaction. You can actually just make the transaction in QuickBooks and then send the payment through QuickBooks using a feature called Milio. That's the name of the company that developed it, but it's all integrated right inside your QuickBooks. You can also track your credit card expenses, and maybe you are using accounts payable where maybe you send a purchase order for products that you have on order. And then when those products arrive, you make a bill, then you pay the bills. Whether you're just entering your expenses in retrospect as they come in, or whether you're being proactive and putting in your bills so that you know what expenses you have coming up for your cash flow, QuickBooks Online can accommodate both of those. Again, let's go take a look. The vendors all happen under the expenses tab right here. So I can see a list of all of the expenses that are in the system, or I can see a list of the vendors, the people that I pay money to. I can go up to the plus new button again. The plus new is anytime you want to add in a transaction. Then here are my different vendor workflows. So an expense is any kind of generic money out. Doesn't matter if it's a credit card, cash, whatever, you would make an expense. If you are recording a check that you have handwritten, you would choose check. If you're recording an expense that you're going to pay later, you would choose bill. I'm going to go ahead and do a bill for this demo. The only difference between the bills, forms, and the expenses and checks is that this one's just not paying off immediately. When I have an expense for a vendor, I can go ahead and say who it's for and what the date of it is. And notice that because I chose Brosnahan Insurance Agency, and this isn't the first time I've used them, notice that it even auto-filled insurance for me. That's a feature that you can have on if it's helpful, or you can turn it off if you find it annoying. But it already knew that it was insurance, and the last time I wrote a bill for it, it was for $241.23, and lo and behold, that's still the right amount. So that's all that I have to do. 
The green button at the bottom says save and schedule payment. That's what I would do if I was using it to pay electronically. Or if I just want to go ahead and go on to my next steps, I can choose save and close. Now that I'm in Brosnahan's insurance agency, I can see my bill history and my recent payments. And I can see here that I actually owe not just the 241 from that last bill, but I actually owe $482. So I'm going to go ahead and pay all of those. If I schedule the payment, that again would push through and either email them a check, or if you had their bank information, you can just do a direct deposit into their bank. Or if I drop this down, I can mark it as paid, and that shows that I'm paying it through some other means. Here are my two bills. So I'll check off those two bills and pay both of these two bills with one bill payment. And I can specify here whether I'm paying it through my checking account, whether I'm paying it by credit card, whatever my payment method is. And I'll go ahead and I'll pay this with my MasterCard. Then save and close. That's how easy it is to manage your expenses in QuickBooks Online. Now, once you've been doing all that hard work in order to enter in all of your daily transactions as they happen through the day, the end result is running your reports. There's two different reasons for running reports. One is for taxes so that you can pay Uncle Sam. At the end of the year, you print out your profit and loss report and your balance sheet report, and you send them to your accountant and they do your taxes. So one of the fundamental reasons of using QuickBooks Online is to track all your activity to find all of those tax deductions so that you can pay as little taxes as possible. But there's another reason for using QuickBooks in addition to your tax liability, and that is so that you can understand your business. Now, remember in the beginning, I talked about the different levels of QuickBooks Online. Simple Start doesn't have a whole lot of reports because it doesn't do a whole lot. It just makes income and expense recording transactions. But the higher up you go in the complexity of the software, the more reports that you get. The two main reports that every business needs are your profit and loss statement and your balance sheet. But then depending on the version that you get, you can also get into sales reports and expense reports as well. Now, let me show you what those look like in your QuickBooks Online. So we're going to go back to Craig's Landscaping again. And notice on the left-hand side that there's a whole reports center right here. As I mentioned before, the number of reports that you see here completely depends on whether you're using Simple Start, Essentials, Plus, or Advanced, and also what features you have turned on and off. You know, if you're not running inventory, you're not going to see any inventory reports. So let's take a look at what these reports look like real quick so that you can get a sense of what to expect and what the dessert is at the end of the meal. Now I'm looking at my profit and loss report for this year to date. I can see here all the different revenue streams and ways of making my income and how much I made doing all of those different things. Then I have my cost of goods or what the costs are that I incurred in order to make that money. Then below that, all of my overhead expenses. Then at the very bottom, I can see my net income or what my profit is for the year so that I can see how much money I actually earned. Now, the thing with all of these reports is that they are all completely customizable. I can choose different date ranges. I can even choose different ways of looking at the columns. This is a sample file, so I don't have a whole lot of data in here. But if I wanted to, for example, I could break this up by month, then run the report by month, and then I can see how I did month by month by month. Or you can do it by customer, or you can do it by product or service sold, or you can do it year over year over year. There's all kinds of ways of customizing the reports so that you can slice and dice your numbers and get that business intelligence that you crave so that you can make good business decisions. The other report that every single business needs is also your balance sheet. Your balance sheet shows you how much you have as all of your assets and your liabilities and your equity. So it shows you what you have in your bank accounts and how much money people owe you in accounts receivable. And if you're running inventory, what your inventory is. And if you have any fixed assets like trucks or equipment or buildings or land, you'll see those as well. Then you can see all your liabilities, all the money that you owe other people. You can see bills that you haven't paid yet. You can see the balance on your credit card. You can see the money that you owe in payroll taxes or sales taxes. If you have any loans out, you'll see those. Then also the owner's equity, all the money that the business owners put in or take out of the company. So again, the reports are completely customizable. 
But then this is where it gets really fun is you have all kinds of different reports that you can run so that you can analyze what are your most popular products and services? Who are your best customers? How much profit did you make by each of the customers? There's so much information that you can pull out of QuickBooks Online. And the whole idea, the whole reason why I think it's fun, but the whole reason why it's useful is that you want to be able to analyze your company and watch it grow. There's a ratio called the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule. You've probably heard of that. That dictates that 20% of all of your inputs into your company are responsible for 80% of all of your outputs. So that means that 20% of your services give you 80% of your revenue and 20% of your customers are your best customers. So I really like using QuickBooks Online to figure out what those little 20% are, because if you can identify those small pieces and do more of them, then your company is going to grow and your profit is going to grow. That's one of my favorite reasons for using QuickBooks Online. Now, that was a lot of information. I just showed you some things that hopefully you're pretty jazzed about. You can see the future of your business and you know that this tool is going to help you succeed. So what I want to do now is help you figure out what's next and where to go from here. So take that deep breath and let's keep going. Even with all that cool stuff that I just showed you, I've only really scratched the surface of what's available. I've only just shown you a quick demo of what there is. I'm a teacher by nature. I love teaching people how to use QuickBooks Online and how to trick it out for their businesses. So I want to show you some of the opportunities that you have so that you can take control of your business's finances. Let's go ahead and show you some of the ways that you can learn about QuickBooks and get up and running with it. The first thing is we have what we call the OWLS. OWLS stands for our on-demand web-based learning solutions. And that's a learning platform that we've put together. When you do your trainings with us, we're not just some webinar where you log in one day through a Zoom link and then it's all gone and you've forgotten everything that you ever learned. We really want to help you build good skills. And so instead, we have a destination that you can go to that stores all of your courses. There's discussion forums. You can go back and rewatch your videos later on. It's got all of the handouts. And like I said, we're not one and done. We're a destination where you can go to store all of the information that you're learning about your QuickBooks. Here's a couple of testimonials from people who are members of our OWLS program. With all that stuff that I've thrown at you, you know, part of it's really exciting, but part of it is kind of overwhelming and daunting as well. I want to really enforce that there's no such thing as a stupid question. I love working with beginners. I love working with people who don't know what they're doing. You know, some people, even if they think they're supposed to know what they're doing, they're afraid to ask questions. And so I just want to reinforce that there's no judgment at all ever when you're working with me. Whatever questions you have, I am very happy to help. Now, when you're learning QuickBooks, the journey is as important as the destination. If you think about it as a roadmap, here you are at the very beginning, at the Beginner's Guide to QuickBooks Online, and you've seen some exciting things and you're pretty inspired to use QuickBooks Online for your company. So where do you go from here? We're going to take a trip up along this road. You'd start with this beginner's guide, and then you take the fundamentals class that I'm about to talk about. But then you can pick and choose from all of the different classes that I offer. I have over 40 different classes that are specific to different parts of QuickBooks, and you can pick and choose the ones that you need for your business. So if you're running payroll, you can take the two-hour payroll class. And if you're not running payroll, you don't need to take it at all. If you're using the mobile app, I have a class on how to use the mobile app, but if you're not using it, you don't have to take that class. To that effect, all of the different classes and learning opportunities can be purchased a la carte, or you can join my membership program and get full access to all of the videos in the entire program. So let's start with the first piece the QuickBooks Online Fundamentals Training. And I have two different approaches to learning it I have a boot camp and a book club. The boot camp is on demand, so it's self paced. You can start as soon as we're done with this video, or you can sign up for the live class and what we call the book club. Now, let's take a look at the two different offerings and where they're the same and how they're different so that you can figure out which one is the right one for you. So, here's a Venn diagram showing where they're the same and where they are different. Now, both of them have the same QuickBooks training videos. 
there's six hours of training that takes you all the way from the beginning of starting up your QuickBooks file, all the way through the daily workflows and through to the reports. If you do the boot camp, you have instantaneous access to all the course materials. You can start as soon as we're done with this video today. You can study at your convenience. You can stop and start whenever you want to. The videos are broken up into bite-sized pieces. Then you can just watch the ones that you want when you need them. Another benefit of the bootcamp is that that content gets refreshed. So every time I teach the course again, you know, once or twice a year, you actually get the fresh videos as well. So the course always matches your interface. There's also a class discussions forum. So when you have questions, you can log in and ask your questions. The book club has all of those same things, but it also has the ability to attend live. So you're participating in the class and that you can get your own questions answered. You also get a community of people who are taking that class with you. We all meet as a group over five weeks. And so we'll meet once a week and you're with the same group of people. And so you learn from each other as well. And sometimes you make some good strategic connections. All of those live meetings are also recorded. So you can go back and watch them later on as well. So here's what you get in both of the two courses. You get the class notes, you get the slide decks so that you can follow along with the material. There's also quizzes, so you can check your understanding after each of the units and make sure that you've gotten the most important information out of each one. When you take either of the two courses, you also get a PDF of the book that I have on Amazon called Master Intuit QuickBooks Online. And this is actually the notes that I developed the courses out of. And so you can follow along with the videos using the book and have an electronic copy that you can just open up whenever you need it, or you can print it out. The core of both of the courses are step-by-step -step training videos where I actually demonstrate how to use QuickBooks. And so you can use the sample file that we worked in today to follow along with it and you get complete demonstration so that you really see how to use it. It's not just reading it in a book. You can absorb it by watching somebody else doing it. Now in the book club, you get all of that plus five weekly meetings. And during that time, you can ask me questions. You can learn from other people in the class. And then we'll talk about what your assignments are for the next week so that you can go step by step through the material. So if you're a procrastinator and you have trouble focusing and getting the work done, this will allow you to say, okay, all I have to do this week are watch these videos and read these pages. And then you know exactly what your expectations are. And by doing it over time, over five weeks, it also really allows you to absorb the material. A special bonus for people in the book club is that it wouldn't be much of a book club if it didn't have a book. And so when you sign up for the book club, we'll actually send you a paperback copy of the book that I have on Amazon. So you get a copy of the book with the class. Let's take a look again at all of the things that you get when you come to me for training and using your QuickBooks online. So if you priced out all of those components, all of it together equals $391. But because you're here today watching this video, we're actually going to give you a discount. You can take the boot camp for $179, or you can join the book club for $279. The difference basically being $100 for the live interaction and one-on-one -on -one training. So it's time to sign up. Figure out which one is the right one for you. You can scroll down on this page, and you can either choose the boot camp or the book club and then click the Enroll Now button. So again, my name is Alicia Katz-Pollock from RoyalWise.com. Thank you for watching our Beginner's Guide to QuickBooks Online. And I would be absolutely happy to help you learn how to use QuickBooks and help your business succeed. Welcome to the Royal Wise Owls, and I will see you in class.